All right. Um, my name is Jara Thal. I work with Kim Lee Horn, and I'm an engineer that is representing NDOT at this traffic calming meeting. Um, I'm here with my colleague, Ariana Martin. You want to say hey, Ariana? Hey, um, I'm Ariana. So if you feel more comfortable um, typing any questions in the chat, feel free, and I'll make sure to interrupt Jara if she gets carried away with this presentation because it is very exciting. <laughs> Um, okay, and I think we're ready to get going. So we're here to talk about some traffic calming ideas we have for 28th Avenue North in District 21. So um, we'll start with some background. Uh, we wanna kind of start with why we're doing this. So. Let's talk about the three E's of traffic calming. The first E is education, which is things like signs and courses and things of that nature that kind of let people know how they should be driving on the streets um, and why it's safer for them to drive at lower speeds. There is enforcement, which um, police are able to encourage people to drive more slowly in ways that we can't. And then there's engineering, which is where we come in. Um, so we're able to essentially make physical adjustments to the street, whether that's signs or things on the road itself um, to try and get people to drive more safely on the roads. So what is traffic calming? Um, this program that NDOT has focuses on residential streets. So we really wanna make sure we're targeting the streets where people are walking to and from their houses to get to destinations, just going for a leisurely stroll. Um, we're not targeting major streets where they're built to get people from one place to another and you're less likely to walk along them. So we're really focused on residential streets in neighborhoods. Um, our solutions are usually physical solutions. As I mentioned, they're either on the road or um, on the shoulder. Their signs, their pavement markings, things of that nature. And the objective of these measures is to reduce speeds along roads where people are driving at speeds that are dangerous to the residents. Um, and so we don't really do spot improvements. We typically take a stretch of road and try to encourage lower speeds along the entire stretch. So as I mentioned, this program is a street program and not a neighborhood program. That's an important distinction because we're looking, we're prioritizing projects on a street by street level versus a full neighborhood level. Um, that's just to make sure that we're really targeting the problem areas in specific er in specific parts of town. Um, and so, Another reason why we do that is we obviously have limited resources. So we wanna make sure that the resources are going where they need to go and not just kind of a general in a general area based off of one street. And so outside of this program, if you have some recommendations or you maybe need something addressed in your neighborhood that doesn't quite fall under traffic calming, here are some resources for where to direct those. So Hub Nashville is great for if you wanna request a stop sign, for example, because um, unfortunately stop signs aren't part of what's considered traffic calming. They're a traffic control device. And so those are used in a similar way to a stoplight um, where it needs to be warranted based off of volumes and other types of metrics that don't really necessarily relate directly to traffic calming. Um, there is walk and bike. So Anna Dearman is a great contact for that. If you want sidewalks, if you want bike lanes, if you want more pedestrian friendly facilities, that's where you would reach out. And then the Beautification Commission is kind of self-explanatory. There are the street cleanups, there are the community service. If you want your road to be more beautiful than it is, reach out to them. Um, and so to get into this program, 
somebody in your neighborhood sent in an application um, essentially requesting that we look into a particular street or multiple streets within the neighborhood that they thought were dangerous. And so there's high demand throughout Davidson County because we, we have two cycles per year where um, residents are allowed to send in applications. And so as of our most current, our most recent cycle, we had 426 neighborhood streets in our program requesting us to study and improve their streets. Um, and so this cycle, we selected 27 neighborhood streets. And so 28th Avenue North was one of them. And this gives kind of a high level view of how we go about prioritizing those 426 streets. Um, out of a full 100 points, we divide these metrics proportionally. Um, we're looking into measured speed. So we're looking at the 85th percentile speed, which is basically saying that 85% of cars are going at the speed or below. Um, we know that there are gonna be outliers. There are gonna be people who are racing down a neighborhood street at 100 miles per hour. Um, and so we don't want that to kind of like one person speed to skew our numbers. So we go with 85, 85th percentile speed. That gives us an idea of how fast most people are going. Um, and so we compare that to the posted speed limit and that, weighs very heavily in our prioritization because obviously you don't want to get hit by a car, but if you're walking and you do get hit by a car, you ideally want it to be going pretty slow. Um, and so outside of that, we look at crash history. We take the past five years of crashes. We look at active transportation. So basically whether or not there are sidewalks, if you're walking in your neighborhood, are you forced to walk in the street or do you have a place to walk that's separate from where the cars are traveling. Um, and then also neighborhood destinations. So are there locations within walking distance of the street that people are going to be inclined to go to? And so the street that was selected in this neighborhood is 28th Avenue North from Buchanan Street to Ed Temple Boulevard. Um, there were no other streets on the application had there been other streets that didn't make it through the prioritization process because again each street on the application is prioritized separately those streets would stay in the prioritization pool and be looked at every cycle for the next um i guess indefinitely and if you wanted us to go back out and collect fresh data maybe there's some new houses built on a street or something that has changed traffic patterns significantly. Um, after two years, you can reapply and we would collect new data for the street. So this is a visual to show what street we're working on, where it intersects. Um, so now we're gonna go through some of the calming, the com common traffic calming measures that we use in our program. This is kind of our toolbox. It, these are the, the options that we have to try and improve, um, try and slow down traffic in neighborhoods. So first up are speed cushions. This is kind of the bread and butter of our program. Um, we utilize these a lot because they're very effective. Um, so in, they're rubberized, speed humps, essentially, not to be confused with the speed bumps that you would find in a parking lot. These are, um, they're much longer. The, the height of them is pretty short. They're only three inches tall. So going over them is a lot more comfortable and you're able to go over them at a much more reasonable speed without having to come to a full stop. Um, we tend to use these more than some of the other options that I'll go through because of those gaps that you'll notice between the cushions. Um, those gaps allow larger vehicles like fire trucks to go over the cushions more easily um, than if they were going over something that went all the way across the street. And so this is our next item, which is signage and marking. We use these in conjunction with some of the others at times. Um, so we have 
radar feedback signs that are pictured on the left. And you're probably familiar with those. They let you know what your speed is. And we typically pair them with um, a regulatory speed limit sign that lets you know what the posted speed limit is for the area that you're driving through, just to give you an idea in case you're not looking at your speedometer in the moment. Um, we also use other pavement markings, as you can see on the right, these zigzag lines that just call some attention to the road, get the driver's attention, make them focus on the task at hand so that their eyes are less inclined to wander. Um, next up, we have narrowing. It's been found that people are more likely to drive carefully if the road that they're driving on is narrower. Um, if you're, for example, um, if you're driving along a road that has street parking, that essentially narrows the road because there are cars sitting there, you're probably more likely to drive slowly than if the street is completely open and super wide. So that's kind of the thought process behind narrowing. Um, we have speed tables. These are similar to in concept to the cushion where it's a vertical measure, something that you physically have to go over. Um, I would note that these are longer than most of the speed cushions that we use where the, your car can, an average car can fit completely on the speed table. And because they're longer, you don't have to slow down as much. So if there's a residential street that, for example, has a higher speed limit, we sometimes turn to speed tables, but again, they don't provide those gaps that the cushions do. So we're, we use these pretty sparingly. Um, and then we have traffic circles. If an intersection is really large, people are more inclined to kind of fly through it at a higher speed. And so a traffic circle just provides a physical obstacle in the middle of it that people have to drive around and it kind of forces you to drive more slowly because you're rounding a bend. And then we have chicanes, which are another physical measure where instead of um, like a vertical deflection, you have a horizontal deflection where you're essentially going to have to zigzag down the road and Again, those abrupt changes in direction force you to drive more carefully. So this is a program flow chart that shows the workflow of the projects that are currently in our program. Um, so we're at the meeting one stage, which is highlighted in red. So to get here, an application had to have been submitted by a resident. Um, and then we went through our prioritization process that I outlined earlier. We collected data and evaluated um, the applications. And so um, this street ranked high enough to be in um, our, our cycle this year. And so right now we're at meeting one, giving an overview of the program, and I'll be showing you the concept that we've come up with. And next we'll refine the design, we'll send out another meeting invitation, um, and we'll have another meeting to discuss the more finalized plans. And then we'll move on to the ballot stage where all the residents will receive postcards with unique IDs where they'll be able to go online and vote for or against the project. We want feedback in both directions to know how people really feel about it. Um, there's a six week window for people to vote after we send out the postcards and a successful ballot is one in which 66% of respondents vote yes. If that happens, then we'll move into the implementation stage of the project. Um, and then if the ballot is successful, we order materials, we install them in the road. Um, if the ballot is unsuccessful, I should note, um, then we look into alternatives. If we were, so the Ballots happen if physical measures are proposed for your road. And so if the ballot doesn't pass, then we would probably go with a less intrusive measure that may not necessarily be as effective. But again, we want to listen to the residents and um, find a solution that kind of works for everyone. OK, so. This is the concept we came up with for 28th Avenue North. 
So we'll be using speed cushions. Um, we went out and visited your street and took some measurements and just to make sure that any slopes along your street weren't too steep for speed cushions. We don't like to put them on slopes that are more than 6%. And fortunately, the maximum slope on your street was 4.5%. So we feel pretty good about installing speed cushions along 28th Avenue. Um, so we have four sets and they're spaced between about 375 to 450 feet from each other, which is pretty average spacing for our program. Um, and so that's kind of the idea is you'll have breaks in between, but not enough space for people to pick up too much speed. Because if you'll notice, 20th Avenue runs parallel to Ed Temple Boulevard, which is a much, a much larger and busier street. Um, and so people likely use it as a cut through if there's traffic along Ed Temple and you know your street pretty well, I'm sure. Uh, it's very wide and very straight. And so it's easy to just kind of pick up speed going from one end to the other. So the idea is that these vertical measures would make people have to drive more mindfully down the street. Um, does anybody have any questions? I noticed that somebody else has joined the call. Okay, uh, if not, we'll move on to the next slide. So, as I mentioned, everyone that lit, um, all of the homeowners on the street will get the opportunity to vote on the measures for or against. And so this is a map showing which residences would be eligible to vote. And so basically any property that um, directly touches 28th Avenue North, the owner of that property would get, if the property is residential, the owner of that property would get the opportunity to vote for or against these measures. So this is just kind of an outline. We would go through and weed out non-residential properties like churches or businesses, things of that nature. Um, so really just the homeowners get to vote on whether or not we put measures on the street. Um, and that concludes our presentation. Um, this is some contact information. Um, Gil Thomas is the program manager at NDOT, and so you can reach out to him. My name is Jara Fowl. I'm the project engineer, um, and that's my email address. If you come up with any further questions or you are talking to one of your neighbors and they want to ask some follow-up questions, we're happy to answer them. Um, this meeting, the recording of this meeting is going to be posted online, and so it'll be available on the Metro YouTube channel. Um, and so anyone who missed this meeting can also watch the recording. Uh, this went by pretty quickly. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? I do. Um, I just started the meeting, so you may have already said this, but um, how soon after the vote will this, um, will this start or begin? Um, so the voting, so we send out the ballots and we have a six week voting period for residents to submit their votes. And then once that period ends, it's if the ballot measure passes, which it needs 66% of the respondents to vote yes in order to in order for us to go through with construction. Um, then it typically takes about six to eight weeks for us to order the materials and get them installed. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, if not, again, our contact information is here on the screen. And we're happy to answer any questions that maybe come up after you've had a chance to sleep on it. Um, but if there's nothing else, um, I guess we can wrap up. Well, thanks for joining uh, and thanks for 
coming to listen to our ideas for your street. And we look forward to seeing you again at the next meeting.